Admiral Bradley? I want it in conference, sir. Very well. Now, here is the exact position of our carrier. Senator, if you step over here, you can see the chart. We're 750 miles from the west coast. This is the point from which we'll make our attack. Oh, just a moment. Admiral Bradley, am I to understand this carrier has evaded all the submarines you set up as a defense? Not all of them, Senator. Well, let's say most of them. Admiral Williams, you stated that the point of attack is 750 miles out. Could you actually hit the coast from that distance? Yes, Senator. And from a lot farther with this new weapon. This is the first time it's ever been fired from the deck of a carrier. And if we're successful, it could very well change the whole future of naval warfare. Now hear this. All observers report to the bridge. With one of my submarines unaccounted for, we still have an outside chance. <laughs> Don't make any bets on it. We're going to fire in just 10 minutes. Stand by for the 10-minute warning. There it is, gentlemen. The result of two years of preparation. A V-2 rocket which will be directed to its target by radar from this carrier. Heavy ships at 075. Bring her up to 62 feet. 62 feet. Down periscope. Right 10 degrees rudder, steady on course 270. Right 10 degrees rudder, steady on course 270. 150 feet. 150 feet. We're going to go into the screen, rig for silent running. Rig for silent running. Secure from silent running. All ahead standard. All ahead standard. Bring her up smartly. Periscope depth. Periscope depth. Up periscope. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Make ready all torpedo tubes. Up periscope. Fast propellers, one zero five. Message from Fleet Umpire to Submarine Bluefin. You have been sunk by depth charge. Service. Now that's what I call being sunk with dignity. Everything high class. No rivet springing a leak, no banging your head with every depth charge, and no upper plate wobble. You're a very funny man. Admiral Bradley's gonna love this. Service. Bradley, a message from the Fleet Umpire. There goes the ball game. The Blue Fin was the last submarine we had in a position to attack. Why don't you come aft? It isn't every day a submariner gets to see a rocket fired off a carrier. Stand by for the three-minute warning. T. 
Take a look at that. Brother, I wouldn't want to be around when they let that go. How would you like to be around where it lands? By then, I'll be out. I've done my 20 years. From now on in, I'll read about those things in the newspapers. That's what we need on our subs. What? You heard me, Fuss. We need a rocket like that on the bluefin. Ten, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Why can't they go back to bows and arrows? Signal all units to cease present exercise and return to port. Aye, sir. Congratulations on a successful operation, Admiral. Thank you, Bradley. Congratulations, Congratulations Admiral. Thank you. Captain Whitaker, when we get to port, have your commanding officer's report for a conference aboard my flagship. Aye, aye, sir. Get over number one. Get over number one. The was in the pilot house, sir. Thank you. It was the job of our submarines as a defending force to stop that carrier. And we failed. If this had been actual warfare of the type we'll face in the future, our West Coast would be trying to recover from its first atomic attack. Pardon me, Admiral. Yes. We didn't have much of a chance against their anti-submarine devices. When I tried to close in, I couldn't evade their sound screen. I don't think torpedoes are the answer anymore. You're Talbot, aren't you? Yes, sir. Report to my cabin after this conference. Yes, sir. Talbot, I know that it was a tough spot to be in, but if you would handle your ship properly in approaching the destroyer screen, you may not have been detected. Maybe not, sir. But the only place any submarine should have been was 50 miles away from that task force. Why, that's the way we'll whip them in the future, sir, by staying outside their anti-submarine range. And just what do you expect to do out there? Give us some guided missiles, sir, ones we can steer right onto the target. We'll sink them. Is that all? Yes, sir. We could hit them and submerge before they even knew we were in the same ocean. You're not Buck Rogers, Bill. But launching guided missiles from submarines isn't a, isn't a funny paper idea. It could be practical. The captain's not talking against your basic idea, Talbot, neither am I. It won't be any surprise to you to learn the Navy's been interested in such a weapon for a long time. But it'll take special submarines. And until we get a larger appropriation... Well, why not equip the subs we have? I mean, if we experiment with our present ships, that'll save time and money when the new ships are built. In the meantime, that's the best defense against attack. Don't you think that decision is up to the Chief of Naval Operations? Yes, sir. With your permission, sir, I'd like to make a request to the CNO to take my ship to the missile test center at Point Magoo for special training with guided missiles. In other words, you want to jump the gun on the whole program. Suppose your request is approved. And suppose you fail at Point Magoo, just as you did the other day. It could cause the Navy to drop the whole submarine guided missile project. It might never get off the drawing board. I'd still want to try it, sir. Very well, Tubby. I'll forward your request. But without my recommendation. Aye, aye, sir. Well, Whitaker, how does it feel to be out of date? Oh, I don't think he meant it that way, sir. Well, you ought to. That's the way I felt about my superiors when I was his age. If our young officers ever stop feeling that way occasionally, this Navy will be in trouble. Communications, Admiral Bradley. Coded dispatch, Chief of Naval Operations. Bluefin, request permission, proceed Point Magoo. Better get those things off tonight. This dispatch just came in, sir. I thought you might want to see it while we're still working on the budget estimates. What's got into Bradley? He knows there's no money for this. That's why he passed it up without recommendations, sir. But they didn't look too good on that last operation. So you can't blame this submarine skipper for trying. I thought you might like to hear what the Bureau of Personnel has on Talbot. Commander William A., commanding officer of submarine Bluefin, 1944, when the Navy crossed at Suva Straits, installed improvised rocket launching equipment, 
and bombarded coast of Japan in 1945. Oh, that Talbot, eh? All this dispatch request is to proceed to Point Magoo for experimental training. We've got to give submarines a chance to fire guided missiles pretty soon. Otherwise, it'll look like we're committing ourselves to just launching them from surface craft. Well, without a larger appropriation... Let Talbot try it. There's a final armed services budget meeting in seven weeks. If you can show any results by then, we'll have a good argument for a real appropriation. Now well, we got a big job ahead of us, Fuss. We've done them before, sir. Blue Fin's a great ship. Yeah, went through a lot during the last war, didn't it? Best submarine in the Navy, sir. Yeah. There are not many of the old crew left. Now there's Pete, Ike, Andy, Myers, and you. We're in the sea test range, sir. A message just came in for us to dock at Port Wainimi. It's only a few minutes by jeep to Point Magoo. Fine. First thing in the morning, we'll take off the wooden deck aft, clear space so we can rig up launching rails. I figure we'll need about 20 feet. Well, I'll... I'll get the men started on it anyway. What I meant was that... my retirement orders ought to be coming through in a week or so, sir. Are you really going through with it this time, huh, Fush? Yes. You on a chicken ranch. <laughs> That'll really be something. I wish you'd think it over. Oh, I have, sir. I got another letter from my sister, sir. Say, did I ever show you the picture of her boy? Mm-hmm. My nephew. Yeah, he's a bright-looking kid. He's going on 15 now. Too big and sassy for a woman alone to handle. Needs a man around to show him the ropes. You, uh, you understand, don't you, sir? Oh, sure, I understand. It's just that I've kind of got used to depending on you. Yes, sir. Like a small craft. Get ahead, sir. <laughs> Looks like fishing boats, sir. Something trailing alongside, sir. We fouled one of their nets. All back full. All back full. I see your identification, sir. Commander Talbot reporting to Admiral Scott. I'll take it, Sentry. Sign this. Wear this. Carry this. Whatever you do here, whatever you hear here, whatever you see here, leave here. Right. Oh, now you can squeeze me in for a minute, Karen. Admiral Scott has to approve these modifications. Well, he has to approve everything. I'm sorry, you'll just have to wait your turn. Hello, Hank. Hello, Bill. What are you doing here? Me? Why, I'm the pilot that teaches him to fly without pilots. Oh. Come on, let's grab a cup of coffee. No, thanks. I've got to see Admiral Scott right away. Yeah? Hmm. Well, observe, my boy, observe. You'll be lucky if you get in by next Tuesday. I want to be launching rockets by then. Well, it's nice of you to tell us. Do you have your papers, please? Yeah. Bales of them. Will you tell Admiral Scott I'm anxious to see him? Commander Talbot is here, Admiral. Turn him in. Right across the hall. Thank you. Send them through as soon as you can make up specifications. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, you're Talbot, eh? What's the idea of cutting fishing nets all over the channel? Fishing nets? Well, I only found one, sir. Well, one's too many. First call I had this morning was from a fisherman threatening to sue everybody. 
We've had enough trouble convincing the ranch owners we're not going to blow everyone to kingdom come without you getting us involved with the fishermen, too. I was very anxious to get here, sir. Everybody's anxious to get here. Navy, Army, Air Force, Marines. But you're the first one who brought a submarine along. It ought to be interesting, very interesting. Did you bring any money with you? Well, what we're here for won't cost very much, sir. We can't afford it if it costs anything. Operation 6 deferred. 20-minute warning on the loon has been signed. We're loaded with projects. Guided missiles from land to aircraft, from ships to aircraft, aircraft to aircraft. And we've barely enough money to keep those going without experimenting with submarines. Well, I know things are tight, sir, but I wouldn't be here if CNO didn't think it was important. All I needed the materials and oh, some... Oh, that's all. A few guided missiles, maybe, some launching rails to fire them from. What about a few other little things, like special training for your crew? Do you know what that consists of? One, basic construction of missiles and launchers. Two, the theoretical and practical aspects of rockets, jets, and pulse jet engines. Three, handling and maintenance of the missile and its launching equipment. Four, preparation of missiles for firing. Five, theory of radio and radar control. Six, adjustments and maintenance of special control equipment. Seven, technique of controlling the missile in flight. I could go right on, Talbot, but I won't, because you're an expert already, and all you need are the materials. Well, I thought since we were only going to be here for seven weeks, sir. That... Seven weeks? I've been working with rockets for 13 years. And it's taken me that long to figure out how we can boil this course down to four months. Class will start in the morning. Any questions? No, sir. My crew learns fast. What do you feed the Admiral for breakfast? Small commanders? No. He's a nice man. It's only that he has to spend most of his time saying no. No money, no equipment. And no dice, Commander. <laughs> Cup of coffee, please. Yes, sir. Now, you didn't pick that accent up around here, did you? No, my family was Danish. We came over during the war. You live on the base? None of the civilian employees live on the base. Most of us live up in Oxnard. That's the nearest town. Well, I'll have to look into that. I'm a great believer in knowing where everybody lives. Hey, you have a pretty responsible job here, don't you? I guess you know that we start school tomorrow. Ah, what a shame to waste all that time in classes. You think so? Yeah. Working with missus can be very dangerous. It's important that everyone knows his job. Yeah, that's why I feel it's best to concentrate on just the courses that really count. Maybe you know a couple of shortcuts. Sure, all of them. So I shall be very careful in checking your attendance. I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. As security officer of this station, I want to impress two things on you. One, you are the first submarine personnel to receive special training in guided missiles. This fact in itself is confidential. Two, you will discuss this training with no one. Instructors at this station will be glad to answer any questions that may arise. At all times, complete security will prevail. You will now report to classroom number one. A missile is anything that can be projected to hit a distant object. A guided missile is one that can be controlled by radar and directed to its target. Now, for you submariners, launching a missile will not be unlike firing a torpedo with wings. But before you can launch one yourself, you must know all about them. How they're assembled, what makes them fly, their characteristics and varying conditions. In three or four months, you'll have a pretty good idea what they're like. All of these are guided missiles. This is a dragonfly. Its last test, it flew 1,500 miles in 41 minutes. This missile over here is a loon. It's equipped with booster rockets which drop off after the missile has gained flying speed. Now, this is the type you'll probably launch from your submarine. It can travel a distance of 150 miles in 18 minutes. This is the M27, which is launched from the ground against attacking aircraft. It travels about 750 miles per hour. You know, we're pretty well pressed for time, and since we're only going to use the loon... Admiral don't... Scott insists that each class be instructed in all types of guided missiles. A launcher is the mechanism from which a guided missile is fired. Firing a guided missile, gentlemen, is a whale of a complicated business. Uh, therefore, this course will deal with aerodynamics, electronics, and gyroscopics. 
Before we finish, you will know more about these books than the men who wrote them. I quit high school to join the Navy. Before any missile is approved for use, its motor is first tested in restrained flight. Any flaws that might make for erratic flight are detected here. Hey, where's the pilot? That's one of our target planes. In flight, it has no pilot, but is directed from another plane. Takeoffs and landings, the chief here is the pilot. Okay, chief. submarines without crews. Do you think they'll ever learn how to swap a deck by just pressing a button? That's it, fellas. Maddox and Thomas, you stay here. Uh, so far, we've learned just about everything except what we came here for. Yeah, I'm going to have a talk with that professor. You know, we may have to set up shop for ourselves. But we haven't learned anything about launching missiles. Now, we've got to know how to build a launcher, and if we wait until the last minute... Now, don't be impatient, Commander. After you finish these courses, you'll learn the practical side of building a launcher. I know. Outside the classrooms. doing here. This is the third place you're taking me, and the sign still says keep out. Only this one is smaller. Look, the skipper said you may have to set up shop for yourselves, didn't he? What are you guys going to do when I'm gone? Same old thing, R-10. R-10, huh? Yeah. No. Be sure you keep it 15 inches away from the outside rail. Oh, still keeping the distance at 15 inches, huh? Sure, why not? Well, I heard that the latest specification... What do you mean? These are the... Say, you new here? Who, me? Oh, no, I... I just been in the hospital, that's all. Just... just checking out to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Well, see you around, Chief. So long. an R-10 launcher and that the inside rail is exactly 15 inches from the outside rail. Now all we have to do is go back and draw up a blueprint. Yeah. Hey, Chief. You're paying, aren't you, McAvoy? We might be. That's the way I like people to talk. Everything open and above board. Look, Chief, you can save us both a lot of trouble by just following regulations. You want to know anything special? Ask the instructors. That way, nothing leaks out, and we keep all this secret. You do that, and you'll stay out of trouble, and I'll stay out of your hair. Okay? Who is that guy? Remember what they told us? Whatever you do here, whatever you see here, whatever you hear here, he's the guy that makes sure it stays here. Come in. Hello, Fudd. You, uh, sent for me, sir? Yeah. What's with you in the security office? Nothing much. We just wandered off limits, that's all, sir. You must be getting old. You've never been on report before. I never hit Point Magoo before, sir. 
This outfit knows all the angles. They throw you nothing but curves. Yeah. And some of them come in pretty nice packages. Huh? Oh, I thought we'd take a drive down to the beach. As I hear, the view's very beautiful down there. we came up here for? Well, uh, well... Well, think of the time we've saved. You see, Commander, I've been out with sailors before. Yes, I, I was beginning to get that idea. And they usually feel that at first they must be polite. So for half an hour they talk about how beautiful the night is, the ocean is, and I am. Well, it's very flattering, but every girl has heard it before. And when a man has spent all that time talking, he's apt to be difficult to handle. So I'd rather kiss him first and then say no, than to start out by saying no and kissing him later. You take a lot for granted, don't you? And how do you know that was my intention? Can a man take a, a girl out for any other reason oh, than just... Oh, yes, there's a second type of man. They buy me nice dinners, they pay me compliments. But it always turns out that they're in some kind of trouble at the station. And they suddenly think that since I'm the Admiral's secretary, that maybe there's a way I could help them. What makes you think I'm that type? I mean, you've, you've got a very warped opinion of men. I wouldn't play a trick like that on you. I well, would... that's fine, because then I don't have to embarrass you by saying no to that either. Oh, now, just wait a you minute. You see, I realize how important this work is. I know what it means to be on the losing side of a war. To me, my work is much more than just a job in an office. And since my day starts at 8 a.m., and you don't want anything from me after all, I think you better take me home. Thanks for a pleasant evening. Now what? Now what? Yeah, you're the girl who always knows what a man's going to do next, aren't you? Well? Well, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. You don't know what you did to my feelings. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to see me again. You know, there's a third type of man you didn't mention. What kind is that? That's the kind of man who likes to make up his own mind. Really? Now, that kind of a man could be very interesting. But not tonight. Wait a minute. You can't say no until you've kissed me. That's your philosophy, isn't it? Oh, my philosophy is only one kiss to an evening, one to a customer. Yes, well, maybe I'm not a one evening customer. Please, you don't have to be polite and see me to the door. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, after all, you are going to invite me in for a minute, aren't you? No, please, my family may be waiting up for me. Who'd want to wait up for a girl who can take care of herself like you? We can talk about that some other time. Sure, we can do our talking later. <gasps> oh, yeah. Well, I guess I've stayed my minute. Good night, Commander. Thank you. 
Control Abel from Area Clearance. What's the status of the loon? This is Control Abel. We're all set to start a five minute warning. Is the area clear? Area is clear. Control Abel from Area Clearance. We are ready to track loon. The area is clear. Okay for five minute warning. Mark, five minutes. Firing circuit safe. Firing circuit safe. Plug in firing leads. Close the safety switch. Check the firing circuit. Firing circuit, okay. Launcher is armed. Launcher armed. Stand by for the two minute warning. Mark, two minutes. Ox nest, this is control. Chase plane, take off. Forty-five seconds. Take over, Commander. Forty seconds. Stand by to start engine. Thirty-five seconds. Start engine. This is Control. Go ahead, Control. We are directing Loon at 3,000 feet. How's its flight? Loon at 3,000 feet. Speed 500. Flying steady. Loon test checked. Speed 500. Course steady. Altitude 3,000 feet. Hello, Hawk 1. This is Control. Go ahead, Control. Loon target is Big Rock. Continue to observe and contact. We'll go. guys, listen to this. My kid nephew wants to know how soon he can get into the Navy. <laughs> As if 20 years in this canoe club wasn't enough for one family. Well, I'll soon whale that idea out of his head. You won't have to when he gets a look at what 20 years did to you. Fuss is just kidding. It'd take a 20 mule team to get him out of this man's Navy. That's what you think. There I'll be, sitting on my big fat retirement check drinking my beer. While your nephew polices the area, I'll bet. He'll have to join the Navy just to get away from you. Some dirt over there. Any news, sir? The only good news I've had today was about you. Me, sir? I heard you re-enlisted. Oh, I... <laughs> I, uh, I figured you might be able to use me, sir. <laughs> if anybody's got anything to say... Who's saying anything? A civilian? 
No luck with Admiral Scott, sir? No. I told him we only had 10 days left. It didn't make a dent. There's just no launchers adaptable to submarines, and that's that. Does that mean we leave here without ever doing what we came for? Maybe they'll give us some more time, sir. Not a chance. You know, what burns me up is that I could build that launcher myself. The only problem would be locating the parts. Parts? Yeah. Why, they've got everything you need right over there. Oh, well, just knowing where they are, you see, that isn't good enough. Oh, besides, they're probably all earmarked for other outfits. Nah, they got plenty of spares. Oh, really? Well, now, isn't that a shame? All those nice parts going to waste. You know, it's too bad I can't requisition them myself. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's too bad. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, I guess we'll have to forget about it. Oh, uh, sir, uh, in case anyone should come calling for you tonight, uh, where would we find you? At the officers' club. Well, there goes the weekend. What do we do now? Here's the way I see it. This isn't going to be like any other deal we've pulled before. This place is crawling with security. First, we're going to need someone who can make with the locks. It's not enough I'm a broom pusher. I've got to have a mechanic of mine, too. Next, we'll need a strong back. Some tomato's gonna miss me tonight. Mac? What a big liberty this is gonna be. Work Saturday night and spend Sunday in the brig. Okay, we'll shove off after dark. Can you make it? I've handled trickier jobs than this, haven't I? Planners. I'll take care of my end. You figure out where we stash this stuff. I got a vacant boathouse all taped, loaded with tools. It's the only place on the station they never check. For a guy who says he's never done time, you think of everything. Come on, come on. How did you ever get out of reform school anyway? Flunk out? I don't want to set off any burglar alarms. See? What do you want, the Navy Cross? Hey, Pete, bring up the truck. be the lookout. We'll just take what we need. And that way they won't miss anything until inventory. Hey, snap it up, you guys. I think I saw some lights. Show them a thing or two. They won't even know we were here. All the right, Chief. The light's gone now. Five, one, two, eight. Glad I've met you at last, Commander. You've certainly made an impression on my husband. Good, I hope. It's been years since I've heard of anyone who could irritate the Admiral quite so thoroughly. <laughs> You also seem to have made an impression on my husband's secretary. Also irritating? <laughs> That's not quite the way I put it. Why don't you ask her yourself and find out? Oh, he's worn me out, Karen. Besides, you see enough of my husband at the office every day. Don't you believe her? She wears very well, Karen. Well, I... She's really wild about dancing. Oh, he's impossible. <laughs> I like that, Commander Tom. Yeah, looks like you're not the only one. Oh, uh, care to dance with an older man, Peg? Why, Tom! Telephone for you, Admiral. The duty officer calling. Oh, excuse me, Peg. I'll be right back. I knew it was too good to be true. The last time you asked me to dance, they bombed Pearl Harbor. <laughs> oh, no. Patio time. I thought we were going to dance. You need a breath of air. Do I? Well, not really. I just like to get you alone and drive myself crazy. You know, you get more beautiful in the moonlight. And who does? The dance is over, Bill. Oh, that's right. So I, I wouldn't want you to think that I'm making love to you. I'm the subtle type. So am I. 
Yes, well, the only difference is, you see, your system works and mine doesn't. But we Danes are stubborn people. Oh, I don't know. I've made a lot of progress with your uncle. You have? Oh, yes, yes. You know, when I come to pick you up now, he doesn't growl at me anymore. Oh, he just grinds his teeth. <laughs> you and your jokes. Now, that's the trouble. I'm a serious girl. Yeah? Suppose I fell in love with you. You'd be late. I've already fallen for you. That's not the same thing. Oh, I don't know. Now, it feels exactly the same. What's this? Am I trapped? Mm -hmm. Oh, doggone it, I am. What? You know, this world has really gone downhill, Karen. In the, in the Stone Age, when a man had a girl in the corner, he just hit her on the head. You know, me, I'm civilized. Yes, I suddenly realize that I've got honorable intentions. Well, what a dreadful shock to you. Well, you can't say I, I didn't fight against it. We're not fighting too hard. Commander Talbot, mm -hmm. I've been looking for you, sir. There's a chief at the door, anxious to see you. Thank you. You uh, think I can trust you with all these sailors, huh? Well, I'm in training. I'll be right back. I hate to bother you, sir, but Pete's had another bad attack. It's his uh, appendix. Oh, appendix. <clears throat> yes, well, I was afraid something like that might happen. I'll make some excuse and be right with you. Nice. Right, Let's take a look at that appendix. Well, you picked a good place for the operation. First part of it's all over, sir. I'd call it a nice, clean removal. Now all we gotta do is figure out how to put this little erector set together. Did you men leave anything? Oh, there's plenty left, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm only stumped about one thing, sir. I don't know where we begin. All right, I'll show you. Oh, this is gonna have to be a night job. We can't start cutting classes. Boy, this will really be like old times. Are you sure you got away clear tonight? Oh, you can count on it, sir. We didn't even leave fingerprints. It's a print from one of our new photoelectric devices. Whenever anyone enters a restricted building after hours, a picture is automatically taken by an infrared camera. They didn't have to steal that material. If I thought they were ready, I'd have given it to them. Do you want me to pick them up, sir? Mm, no. Old Talbot was smart enough to stay out of the actual theft himself. I'm curious. Let them go ahead. Well, but if you do that, sir... As long as that material isn't needed on another project, let them have it for the time being. Talbot has a lot to learn. Well, I think it's very generous of you to let them proceed under the circumstances, sir. You see, they've, uh, they've set up shop in your own boathouse. They've what? See that I get daily reports. Yes, sir. Come in. These reports on the loons just came in, sir, from Army Ordnance. I thought you might want to check them. Ordnance reports, security reports. Oh, by the way, Miss Hanson, I hope you won't be getting yourself involved. One of your admirers is under technical surveillance. Tight as a drum, sir. Next time I borrow some iron like this, I'm gonna borrow some men to put it together. You did all right, Fuzz. Oh. Yeah, we ought to be finished in a couple of hours. Yes, sir, it looks all right, huh? Well, you know, this, uh, this ought to call for a little celebration. How would you men like some liberty? Like it? We not only like it, we'll take it, sir. Sure will. Yes, sir. That is, if you won't be needing us. Oh, first I gotta talk Admiral Scott into letting us use this. Think it'll work all right, sir? Well, it has to. When I see the Admiral... Good evening, Talbot. I take it I'm in time for the christening. Christening, sir? Well, we were just... I know. I've had daily reports from the time you first set up shop in my boathouse. Step aside. <laughs> I've always heard that submariners pride themselves on being self-sufficient. Now I believe it. Thank you, sir. 
but I still don't admire the way you went about it. What was going to be your next step? I thought that once we'd gone this far, you might arrange a test. And what did you intend to fire off the launcher? Why, why a loon, sir. Well, there was just one thing you didn't allow for, Talbot. We haven't had a loon at Point Magoo in two weeks. Since you didn't take us into your confidence, we weren't able to foresee what material you need. In the future, you might do better by trying to work with the Navy. Uncle Chris? Yeah? You're home early. I'm always home early since the Navy came. They're firing into the sea again today. And what are you doing? Getting ready for a picnic with Commander Talbot. He's coming here again? You won't have to see him. I told him I meet him outside. Karen, I don't want you to see him either. It's bad for you to be serious about such a man. Well, I haven't said I was. But if I want to dance or picnic with him... I know you, Karen. You think this is only your stubborn old uncle talking, but this is more than Commander Talbot. It's the way I feel about all the sailors like him. Men that work with things no simple fisherman can understand. And what I can't understand, I don't like. So you turn your back on it. Why not? This business frightens me. There's no answer to it. You are wrong. There is an answer. But you won't find it by looking away. Karen, listen. Uncle Chris, the men at the station have wives and children and people they love. If you are frightened, think how much worse it must be for them who, who really know how terrible these things can be. Do you think they want to use these weapons they've discovered? Or the one that will come later, or perhaps the one that will blow the world apart? What can they do? They're not God to say what's right and wrong and how it will all end. They're only men and they do the best they can. Karen. I still don't have to like it. But I'm glad to hear no one else likes it either. I guess I've wasted these past few weeks, haven't I? What do you mean? I mean I'll be leaving Point Magoo in four days. Yes, I know. All I thought about was how much work I could get done in that time. Instead, I should have been thinking that I was going to have to leave you. Will it matter for very long? Too long. Karen, I'm awfully sorry I haven't been able to see very much of you since the night of the dance. I understand. Oh, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. I just hope I woke up in time. Woke up to what? I, I've been trying to think of a way to say it that wouldn't sound too corny. But now I don't care anymore. days to tell you how much of you're willing to listen. I can't think of anything I'd rather hear. And I have a lot of things to tell you, too. Every bit is corny. I can see you tonight, tomorrow, the day after that. And then you'd be gone. Oh, that won't be for good. No, not now. You know, Admiral Scott, I'd hate to think that he, he was doing me a favor, but he gave me lots of time to sit on my hands. Now, now I can use that time. Don't be bitter toward him, Bill. The Admiral isn't against you. He only told you the truth. Don't try to kid me, Karen. Hmm? But, darling, we haven't had any loons appointment go for two weeks. It was only yesterday that we learned that the new shipment was at the Army Ordnance Depot. They're not far from here, but it takes time to go through channels. Oh, it does, does it? Oh, try not to worry about that. There's nothing you can do, but nothing anyone can do. Thanks a lot, Hank. I'll see you tonight. I still think we're taking a big chance. If Admiral Scott ever finds out you came here and I brought you... He won't. How do you know the loons are stashed here? Well, this is the only army ordinance set up close to Point Magoo. And I suppose you think you'll just borrow a few. Remember, son, this is the army.
Lieutenant Talbot to see your commanding officer. Do you have an ID card, sir? Report to the officer in charge of the gate, sir. Commander Talbot to see your commanding officer. What's the nature of your business, sir? Expediting Navy cargo. Navy. Who's in command of this post, Lieutenant? The commander of this depot is General Benton. Sign this. Initial this. I'll have one of the men run you up, sir. Cassidy, take the commander to headquarters. Thanks, Cassidy. You think you can find your way back without a compass? This only admits you to the reception room, sir. You can explain your business to the captain in the first office. Talbot to see General Benton. For what purpose, sir? Well, I can only tell that to the general. I'm afraid I need more information than that. Well, it concerns guided missiles consigned to the Navy. Initial list. Sign this. Here you are, Commander. Present these to Major Wilson around to your right. Major Wilson? No, Major Kennedy. Did you tell me where I can find I see your room? papers, please? Find Major Wilson in the next office, straight ahead. Thank you. Major Wilson? Yes? Commander Talbot to see General Benton. May I have your ID card? This is a pretty old picture, Commander. Where'd you get that uniform? I bought it. Where'd you get yours? Why, well, I bought... Sign these. Need all these papers to see General Benton? No, you need these to see Colonel Halliburton. Next office. Thank you. Colonel Halliburton, I'm Commander Talbot. Follow me. Colonel Halliburton, this is Commander Talbot. Why did you want to see me? Well, I didn't, sir. It's very important that I see General Benton. You're at Point McCool. Who's the commanding officer there? Admiral Scott. General Benton left for Washington 20 minutes ago. Washington? That's right. I have to see him, sir. Well, you might try the airstrip. If his plane hasn't taken off, you may still find him in the coffee shop. Oh, Commander. Yes. Your papers. Yes. Thank you very much. How are you, General Benton? Don't tell me you're taking off again. I've been spending so much time in planes, I'm beginning to feel like I was in the Air Force. 
I think I'll just have a ham sandwich and a glass of milk. Quite a ride. Excuse me, miss. By any chance did you, you happen... You don't mind, young man. I have to catch a plane. I'm sorry. White bread. Right. Get him right up. <laughs> I'm sorry. So am I. Why don't you watch where you're going, young man? I said I was sorry. I, I was just looking at the plane there, and I... I mean, if you hadn't left your briefcase sitting in the middle of the floor, a thing like that wouldn't have happened. Well, do you plan to block it while you're at it? Uh, I guess this just isn't my day. Tell me, young man. Do you ever have a good day? Not when I have to spend the whole morning with the Army. That's enough to foul up a man for life. Oh, it is, eh? Yeah. Well, I suppose to a Navy man. No, no, it isn't that, sir. Have you ever tangled with the Army? Have I? What was so tough about your morning? Well, I spent the whole morning collecting calling cards. I saw sentries. I met lieutenants. I met, I met captains. I met colonels. Did I meet the right guy? No, no. Who is the right guy? Oh, some character named Benton. Oh? Oh, that character. Here you are, General Benton. Oh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I said that before, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. What are you doing down here? Uh, well, well I, I wanted to get something from you, sir. Yes, you see, I command a submarine down at Point Magoo, and we're just finishing special training. We were about to fire our first loon, and then I find out they don't have any. What do you expect me to do? Well, I thought you might give us some, sir. I, I know you have them here, and they're consigned to Point Magoo, but they haven't been transferred yet. I know about your project, Talbot. There was quite a little talk about it among the Joint Chiefs on my last trip to Washington. Perhaps next week you may have some good news. No, no next week would be too late, sir. Within 72 hours, I may get orders to report back to my squadron. <laughs> some years ago, I intercepted a Navy pass and ran 59 yards to a touchdown. The final score was Army 17, Navy 14. I've always owed the Navy something for that. I'll do what I can. Oh, that's fine, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. You said that before. Yes, I <laughs> did. Three loons, compliments of General Benton, sir. Who authorized you to go to the Army Ordnance Depot? No one, sir. When I found out where they were, they were... You know our orders are to leave here by sunset tomorrow, sir. May we have your permission to fire the loan? Learn that your training was authorized by the CN. Tomorrow morning, sir. Can be ready by then? Yes, sir. If the shop will install the launcher. We'll do the rest. In fact, my crew will work all night getting the loon ready. Very well. I'll make the arrangements. Thank you, sir. Just a minute, Commander. From the day you came here, you've chosen to go your own way. I didn't like that, but I could understand it. In a way, I almost admired it. There's some things no man could admire. You know, of course, that I'll have to change my secretary now. So she didn't have... Save it, Talbot. I think I have more regrets about this than you're capable of. That's all. Karen. Look, Karen, I didn't know it would turn out this way. But you know how important it was for me. There are things that are important to me, too. This job and the way I felt about you. But you, when it comes to a choice, you sacrifice anything for yourself. Well, I never meant it. Karen, will you just listen? Last Sunday, I listened. Now there's no listening left in me. Are the booster rockets ready? All set, sir. Ready to test the firing circuit. Hold it. Is the safety switch on safe? Safety switch on safe, sir. Check the firing circuit. Check firing circuit. 
Firing circuit OK. Firing circuit OK. Stand by for the 10 minute warning. Mark, 10 minutes. 10 minutes to go, sir. Tell control to fire on schedule. Hello, control. This is Bluefin. Bluefin, this is control. Go ahead. We will fire on schedule. Is the area clear? Range follow, sir. Small craft off Big Rock. Where's the patrol plane? Right here, sir. Contact. Hello, Snoopy. This is Control. Hello, Control. This is Snoopy. Go ahead. Check small craft. Fouling range north of Big Rock. We'll call. The range is fouled, sir. What? Give me that. Hello, Hank. Yeah, Bill. This is Bluefin. Can't you do something about it? Take it easy, Bill. I'm working on it now. Hello, Control. Hello, Bluefin. This is Snoopy. Just spotted fishing craft. We'll contact. Where did we see that school of fish this morning? Ten miles north of here. Well, take her down. Maybe I can stir up these fishermen with a bullhorn. On board there. On board there. How's the fishing? You want to know where the fish are running? Ten miles north of here. Follow me. You hear what he said, Nels? We follow the plane. Make full speed. Hello, Control. Hello, Bluefin. This is Snoopy. The range will be clear in five minutes. Thanks, fella. Control, this is Bluefin. We'll fire on schedule. How's the time? Five minutes to go, sir. Hawk's Nest, this is Control. Chase planes take off. Control, this is Hawk 1, heading for Bluefin. Hawk 1, Hawk 2, this is Control. Maintain station over Bluefin and track missile. Shoot down if it goes into erratic flight. Welcome. Out. This doesn't look good, sir. I thought we'd be through before the fog came in. We have orders to leave Point Magoo at sunset today. This is it. Battle stations! We've just developed some trouble with the firing circuit, sir. Take over on the bridge. I'm going on deck. Aye, aye, sir. Mark, two minutes. Two minutes, sir! I've tested everything, sir. You better delay the firing. I'll find the trouble myself. Get below. But, sir, clear the deck. and Chief badly injured. Returning to Port Wainimi at full speed. Operator, send an ambulance to Port Wainimi dock immediately. They've still got a light on. How long can they keep guys on the table? How am I supposed to know? They've been in there for hours. The skipper's just coming out of surgery. They still don't know. Don't know what? What shape he's going to be in. It's his legs. How's Fuss? He didn't make it. He never came to.
Got a good patient, Dr. Gates? For eight weeks in the hospital, surprisingly good. Commander? Doctor? I brought you a visitor. Hello, Talbot. Well, this is very nice of you to come down here, sir. How are the legs coming along? Not bad. They're beginning to feel more like legs. I'll have them back on duty before you know it. What have you got here? Those are plans, sir. I think I know what caused the accident. Now, if we make a few changes in that safety switch, for one thing, well, I have some other ideas, but I'd like to get them to the Board of Investigation before they make their findings. They already have. In spite of the explosion, we're going ahead. Your submarine is staying on at Point Magoo. That means you must have put in a favorable recommendation. Mm, I did. You see, at times, I am a reasonable man. That's what Karen tried to tell me. You should listen more to that young lady. You're a lucky man. Yes, you don't know how lucky, sir. I nearly lost everything, but instead it all turned out fine. Admiral, this young man ought to be getting some rest. Mm. Oh, why don't you take them with you? Oh, all right. I'll be back on duty as quick as I can, sir. I hope it'll be soon, Talbot. Oh, thank you. You haven't told him about Fuss? Not yet. I didn't want to take any chances till we really got him back on his feet. We'll start him walking tomorrow. We found that in his locker. We always thought he was kidding about a house. What'll we do? We can't go ahead without the skipper's signature, and we can't talk to him until Dr. Gates says it's okay. I'll see if I can reach Dr. Gates now. Nurse? Nurse, if you've seen the doctor anywhere, I'd like to... I'd like to show him how I get around. Oh, what do you know? Hello, Andy. Hello, sir. Pete. How are you feeling, sir? Oh, fine. Mac. Hi, sir. Commander, you shouldn't be moving around without a nurse. Oh, I'm fine. What are you men doing here? Well... Oh, uh, we, uh, we were just asking the nurse if we could see you. Oh? <laughs> well, it's about time. I thought you fellas had given me up for dead. <laughs> Have you spoken to Fuss yet? No. No? Well, let's all go see him together. Come on, Commander. Let me help you to your room. Fine, yeah. Hi, it's, it's my first time on my feet. <laughs> I sit down here a moment. The nurse is right, sir. We'll go along with you. Yeah, let's take a breather. Sir. Who said it was? It's the brakes, that's all, sir. That's the way it goes. I need some kind of form to fill out. Keep up these payments. Yes, Commander. My legs. My legs. Will you get me, Dr. Gates? Quickly, please. This is the third time, Doctor, that I've been put off with that excuse. I haven't been able to see him for a week. Sit down. I'll tell you why you haven't been able to see him. Commander Talbot has suffered a relapse. Is it because he found out about Fuss? But no one blames him. I know it, but he blames himself. Then what can you do? If there's no change in a week, we can send him to another hospital. In new surroundings, he, he may snap out of it. And if he doesn't? We have no choice. Him? He can't be retired. Doctor, the Navy's his whole life. Perhaps you haven't encouraged him. Commander Davis says that, that you won't let him see Bill either. Well, don't you see that's a mistake? Doctor, at a time like this, a man needs his friends more than anything. Don't you think I know that? 
I wish I could make him see his crew. And you. I see. I'm sorry. When he has time to work this out, I'm sure he'll want to see all of you. I hope so. better wait here. Yes, sir. Think of what the Japs would have paid for this scrap iron once. You should be able to do without them before long. You'll be under the care of specialists. They've had more experience with your kind of case. Thanks for trying to kid me along, Doc. Bill, do you want to leave the Navy? It's up to you more than anyone else. If you were as determined to throw off those supports as you are to throw off people, So long, Doc. May I help you, Commander? I'll get it. Goodbye, sir. Just be installed aboard the submarines in time for the next fleet exercise? Yes, sir. Using the crew of the Bluefin has speeded up the whole program, sir. The man at the top has designed this gadget after his accident. It's foolproof, see? You can't flip this safety switch by mistake. They look all right to me, sir. I just hope we have better luck with them than the top of this. We will. This new type firing key won't work until everything checks. It's an idea our skipper had while he was in the hospital. Come in. Hello, Karen. Hello, Admiral Scott. You sent for me? Yes, yes, I did. Here. Thank you. Have you heard from Commander Talbot? No, I haven't. Well, I've been in touch with Dr. Gates right along. They still haven't found any reason why he shouldn't be able to walk without support. Nevertheless, he can't. Then he hasn't changed. That's what bothers me. I feel it was my fault, too, letting him go ahead that day. But these things can happen to anyone. The only thing a man can do is put them behind him and go on with his work. But how do you convince him? Guided missiles off submarines will be the most important element of our test at the next fleet exercise. If we could have him take part. Oh, yes, I understand. I thought when I went down to San Diego, I'd go to the hospital and talk to him. To make him see that the Navy needs him, and that he needs the Navy. But Talbot has to want to come back, not only to the Navy, but to life itself. Only one person I know might be able to call him back to both. Will you go down to San Diego with me, Karen, and talk to him? I don't think it'd be of any use. Say it. He needs the Navy. I think he does. It's for me. If you're right, Karen, that young man's even sicker than I thought, but I don't believe it. If anyone can shake him out of it, you can. Will you try? Hello, Bill. Aren't you going to be polite and say you're glad to see me? I never felt less polite in my life. It's good to see you. What 
brought you all the way down here. A business call? I thought I might collect something on my 48 cents. 48 cents? A bad investment I made in postage stamps. Why didn't you answer my letters, babe? Oh, I've just been too busy. Hey, easy doing nothing takes a lot of time. Maybe it's time you stop doing nothing. Admiral Scott has a job for you. Doing what? Knitting a pair of socks? No, an important job. You've heard about the fleet exercises. Yes, I couldn't help hearing about it. Well, did you hear that Admiral Scott has been put in charge of all missile-equipped submarines? He has picked a bluefin for his flagship, and he wants you on it. Why? He knows you can be of help to him. It's too late, Karen. Yes, the Navy's turning me out to... out to pasture next month. And you're going to sit there and do nothing about it. What do you think I can do? You think I can get on a submarine with these? But the doctor says you can. You've fallen for that stuff, too. you got to know when to quit. I used to know men who never quit, never gave in. If I'd known when to quit, I wouldn't be here now. And first would be alive, is that it? Look, since I've been here, I've heard all the pep talks. I know all the routines, up and down, back and forth. So whose bright idea was it anyway to send you here to make the last try? They really loaded you with ammunition, didn't they? All about the Navy needing me? Now, what was your next step? How far were you willing to go? I was willing to go a long way because I loved you. But you wouldn't understand that. You're too selfish to know what loving means. But Fuss understood. In his own way, he loved you. And he died because he believed in you. What would he think of you now, quitting? His dying was one thing. But it's another to... to turn your back on the only thing that made his death have any meaning. Dad must have, didn't he tell the people at the hospital? Well, he must have told someone where he was going. He can't just have... Yes, I'll be right over. Well, keep on checking. We know he hasn't left town. Well, he must be somewhere. A man can't just disappear. Yes, let me know. If we don't hear something quick, we'll bring the police into it. Why did I say those things? I didn't have to. I didn't mean them. Karen, you have to get some sleep. Not till we find him. Yes? Yes, of course. Bill? Well, thank you. He's on the base. The sentry at the gate said he was heading for the bluefin.
good to walk through the ship again, sir. Uh, let me quickly brief you on what we're doing. Our target, the carrier, is out here, protected by destroyers. Captain Whitaker, commanding the submarine's Barracuda, Devilfish, Tuna, and Whale, will try to get by the destroyers for a torpedo attack. In the meantime, our group of submarines will stay back here. As soon as we pick up the carrier on our radar, we can launch our guided missiles. Message from Captain Whitaker, sir. The submarines haven't been able to penetrate the destroyer screen, and the carrier is now launching an anti-submarine air patrol. Have we a target bearing yet? No, sir. on the surface and any planes pick us up with these missiles on deck. We've got to fire them now, sir. I know we don't have contact, but I think there's a way of putting the missiles over the target. It's never been tried before, but it should work. Let's hear it. Uh, we know where Captain Whitaker's submarines are. We know they're in radar contact with the carrier. Now, if we shoot our missiles up to them, they can guide them over the target. Go ahead, Talbot. Thank you, sir. Hello, Barracuda, this is Bluefin. In exactly three minutes, our submarines will commence firing in your direction. Take control in flight and direct over target. Over. We'll call. Clear the deck. Bluefin ready, sir. Very well. Carbon arrow ready. Cusp ready. Sight ready. Jack ready. Fire in succession on signal left to right, commencing with Bluefin. Good luck to all hands. Stand by. Stand by. Commence firing. Commence firing. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, fire. This is your day, Bradley. It's a big day for all of us, haven't we? Guided missiles now crossing fleet. Intact. Congratulations. All units cease present exercise and return to port. Talbot's the most persistent officer I ever had. Whenever he wanted something from the Navy, he got it. What he's after right now, even the Secretary of Defense couldn't give him. 